Cannabis Community Forum this evening. I have to be really transparent about the fact that we put this on the calendar and then we invited students to join us and then they informed us that Thursday um, in this particular week they will be at the Tumbridge Fair. I think it's bracelet night so you can buy a bracelet for one set price and then ride all the rides. Oh. Oh. Um, and there's so, no school tomorrow. And, and there's no <laughs> school tomorrow. So, yeah. so our planning was not, I mean, like one ninth grader told us that our planning was bad. Yes. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just for kids? We've noted that for next year. What's that? Bracelet night just for kids? No, for, for anybody everybody. who buys a bracelet. Yeah. You could go uh, buy a Yeah, you could still go. <laughs> You're yeah. out. But Sophia so. wanted to come, but this is only my second one, so I said, I really I'm like let me understand the flow of these things and then yeah. like <coughs> can come to the next one. So um yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um so I just wanted to say I hope we can do a round of introductions. So just your name, um, and what brought you here this evening. Um, so my name is Lisa Floyd, I'm one of the co-principals here at Randolph Union, and we're really interested to hear from all of you and, and work with all of you this school year. And I'm Katie Sutton. I'm a co-principal with Lisa. Um, and similar to Lisa, we're really excited to have more community participation and input into what we're doing here at the school um, and involve you know multiple stakeholders in that process. And this is kind of like our kickoff meeting to try to solicit this input and, and really create something that everybody feels a part of. I'm Kate Brandstetter. I'm currently the librarian at Braintree Elementary. Um, and I sort of found out about this from Heather Lawler, who was our principal last year. And now she's the, um, I don't even know what her official title is. Assistant, assistant superintendent. superintendent. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Assistant superintendent. So, welcome. Thank you. And I am Jason Finley. Um, after spending nine years as the creative development coordinator at Randolph Tech. There was an opportunity that opened up here at uh, middle and, and the high school um, for director of career services. So I'm uh, working in that program, and I'm also one of the co-teachers in the innovation center. So I'm here really to get a sense of um, what folks are hoping to see happen in the innovation center, and with helping their kids um, make better informed decisions about post-secondary and career education. Thank you. And I'm Tim Everhart, a uh, former parent of two daughters at this school, uh, retired from St. John's Church in Randolph after 30 years of pastoring there, now chaplain at Gifford, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, and a member of FOUR, which mm -hmm. is Forum on Racial Equality, so I'm kind of interested in how we're addressing history and whatever. My name is Trista Farrington. Um, I'm local. I actually grew up here, went to school here. And my kids, I have three children, 15, 8, and 4. So there's just there's a lot of, in speaking to Sophia, sort of about her progress through high school, there are a lot of changes that I wasn't aware of that are happening because just things change as time goes by. There are a lot of things that I'm definitely concerned about, and it's either move my kids out of school or get involved and really try to change things for the better. So that's why we are starting to really participate and be involved. Okay. I'm Martha Mathis and oh boy, started coming to the state in 77 when most of you were probably not born, at least on this side <laughs> of the room. Uh, moved here in 84, my daughter um, Myra Flynn went to school here. Um, I think the class of 01, I think, 2001, something around there. Just retired from Norwich University after 32 years, and I was a dean of students there all those years. And um, I have always had concerns. Um, I'm happy to say, with that though, that I have, I, I see some, some progress from the 2000s to now. It would be sad if I said I didn't, I think. So um, not quite ready to just sit and watch, uh, I don't know what you watch during the day, 
Um, I just retired in July, so I'm not, quite, I'm not used to it yet. <laughs> so I don't know what's on TV in the day. I do have a boxer, puppy. Um, so I'm an animal person too. So I'm, I'm anxious to see what the community uh, is all about. I know I had become uh, friendly with Dana Dexter, met this wonderful young woman, and Trayla Tev, Tev uh, today, and that was glorious. Mm -hmm. And we're lucky to have you guys. Hi everyone, my name is Jordan Siemens. I'm a special educator here, um, and I also co-teach um, with Ted Kelman, the racial justice PBL class. My name is David White. Uh, I have three kids in the school. I also went to this school. My okay. wife went to the school. I was born in 77. <laughs> <laughs> well now, what did you learn today? <laughs> 35 things that dumb people say? Yes. <laughs> what about people my age? Don't say that old folks are cute. <laughs> <laughs> Very insulting. <laughs> my oldest son, actually, he's a senior here, but he's going to early college in Norwich here, oh, so he's wonderful. taking classes in Norwich. So oh, that would be wonderful, wonderful. My middle son is a freshman this year, and I have a daughter who's a third grader in the elementary school, which is also having their PTO thing at the exact same time, so you oh. might have had more people mm. if okay. that didn't compete either. Okay. But I just like to be involved, <laughs> I like to go to the school board meetings, mm -hmm. and I, I was involved myself in a strategy session, I think about a year ago, mm -hmm. and one yeah. of the outcomes that I learned is the importance of families whether it's parents, grandparents, getting involved, coming into the school, their kids will take their education more seriously. And so just hoping to see more families join things like this. Mm -hmm. um, so we did just one round of introductions and what brought you here tonight. And we've had three people join us since we went around the first time. So if we could start with you, Sierra. Uh, and then uh, I'm Sierra. I'm a junior here this year, um, and I'm new this year. Uh, so I wanted to sort of get an idea of like the community. Um, I'm part of the racial justice class, um, so I wanted to sort of get an idea of sort of the environment. Hi everybody, I'm Elaine. I'm an important adult in Sierra's life. So uh, I, we live in Brookfield. Uh, I've not been very involved in uh, what's happening in this area because she's been at U32 in the past. Uh, my energy was focused elsewhere. So, um, like Sierra, I wanted to get a sense of the school community here, um, since this is her first year here, um, and I wanted to see how I might be involved. Uh, in my professional life, I am a professor and program director at Champlain College, and uh, I've been teaching there for, well, 22 years, a uh, very long time in the traditional side, and this year I am excited to have just switched over to our adult continuing education, so I teach adults in the online environment. Um, so I work from home. So I have a little bit more flexibility since I don't have to be up in Burlington all day uh, to be able to be more involved. Sierra, I love your sweatshirt. Thank you. Uh, ben Hicken. I, my son is a junior here at RUHS and uh, I'm here just to kind of listen and you know uh, contribute if, if it makes sense to contribute. Welcome. Welcome. All right. So one of our goals for this year is to um, create a community school organization that does some meaningful work in our school and increases our partnership with the community. Um, <clears throat> so this evening, we thought it would be a good opportunity for us to really begin this meeting. We have an hour and a half scheduled. We might not take all that time but begin just listening to some of the concerns and priorities that people wanted to share with us um, to maybe start to focus our work. We had a forum in the spring that we hoped would help us create an agenda for these meetings. And we do have um, some ideas from that group, but it was a small group. We had two parents and three students. <clears throat> We're fortunate Orca Media filmed that as well so we could go back and pull notes um, from our video that evening as well, um, but we thought we'd just begin this meeting by really listening to what some of the topics are that you might want for a community school organization to engage with this school year. So, I think additionally one of the things we're interested in as well is your input on how we can 
get more people involved in you know these forums and just in general at the school just knowing that you know a school is as strong as the community collaboration um, so we're really interested in your input on that too because here you are you're here and so you're here for a reason so how do we invite others in um, and how do we do this work both you know collaboratively as a group but also allow for and this is kind of where we're headed tonight too to form committees among us based on our areas of interest in the school because I think that's another way to kind of get people involved because they're able to focus in on the things that really matter to them in relation to the school. So just to give you an idea of like the big picture here, um, it's us trying to understand the topics that are important to you and then channel those into potential subcommittees we could form among you. And then throughout the year, maybe it looks like us meeting with separate committees um, and us being able to do that on certain nights and, and really kind of giving us the blueprint for how we should be organizing our group um, so that we get as much contribution as possible. And could you clarify, there's another meeting after this one also. Right. Yes, so and that's the district forum that okay. the that's superintendent is putting okay. on. Thank so you. this that's is like yep. our school-based group, and then he'll have the kind of superintendent or bird's eye group. Okay, right. thank you. All right. I guess I'm interested in, um, there are some of us that are parent alums that go back, way back. Um, I'm interested in what those of you that have kids here now, what is your... How, what does Randolph Union look like now? I mean, it doesn't do much good if I said, describe what it looked like in 2000. So. I mean, I can only give you anecdotes from mm -hmm. what my daughter tells me, right? Okay. Like, that's what I can, because not having Sophia, she's 10th, 10th grade this year. And so, like I said, my assumption you know, starting through the process, which things were very similar to when I was in school, right? You sort of get this idea that things aren't as stuff as time goes by a little bit. So as we've slowly progressed, some of the things that I'm definitely concerned about is behaviors and how those are being dealt with and how those come out through my daughter. Like, because she comes home and she tells me stories about behaviors, right? And then I, under, I don't understand what happens, the repercussions from those behaviors. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like a lot of those behaviors, everyone's being punished versus someone who's actually mm -hmm. having the behavior. And I just want to understand more of, because like I said, you're, you're, you're taking all of this from an anecdote from a 15 year old, right? Like I, mm -hmm. I want to understand more of what's happening, so. Okay. I think I've yeah. had similar experiences. I think the behavior concern for me is I think there's been a history of behaviors being very distracted to the academics getting done. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, not to be focused just on the negatives, but in this particular example, like, I, I don't think the kids get as much academics through the school because of that. I think it's mm -hmm. a serious, and I, and I think the administration agrees because I hear Lane address that, and they're trying to address it at an earlier age with more, um, counselors and interventions at earlier ages so that when they get to the high school they can self-regulate themselves but um, yeah I think it's definitely impacted some educational mm -hmm. because of those behaviors. Can I do, go again? Oh, yes. So another, <laughs> another observation is um, um, you know there's turnover over the years it's just I mean Sports is not academics, but just as an example, like sports boosters really tried to get going and kind of just fizzled out. And for years, there was a group of parents that just sort of took it on and did it. And um, even though sports is not academics, it's good for school morale. And um, I think the parents are struggling to organize and support the kids and support the coaches in a way that's a, that you would expect out of a good, strong community, like the, the way we probably could. Um, it's hard for parents to find the leadership and the time to do stuff like that, but I, that seems to have fizzled recently. In the some of us years. missed the f little phone books, right? Yes. Sports oh, books. Oh, right. Yes. 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 
Yes. I think the music boosters took Luke, that on. That's music mm -hmm. boosters, yeah. right? <clears throat> yeah. I think sports, even though my daughter leaned towards the arts, I think both of those um, connections teach things that you're not going to get in the structured academics. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all the obvious, the teamwork and the sharing and blah, blah, blah. So that's too bad, because in the 2000s, sports was like, eh, here. Yeah. I think it's still good. I think there's still <laughs> positive things happening, but that's one aspect, you know, facet of it that's a little bit struggling. Yeah. We were just talking about that today. Katie and I went yeah. to a conference, and um, we were talking in the car about some of our teams that have been successful recently, but, you know, we don't have a boosters group necessarily. Sierra, do you want to add your perspective? I hate to put you on the spot, but as the lone student here with nine days in as of today, um, I don't know if you have observations you'd like to share. I mean, granted, I only have like been at the school for about nine days, but um, sort of like the mention of like the behavior thing, I've definitely noticed, um, and like how a lot of things sort of go either unnoticed or undealt with by like authority figures and teachers or whatever. Um, and like th that can be like quite distracting from things and just like creating sort of space that doesn't necessarily feel great. Mm -hmm. can, can we hear more about what, you, uh, what you're talking about as far as behavior? I'm not sure what, what you're referring to. Is it bad behavior? Is it what is what is it? Disrespect? Or? I think it's a lot of it is just the student is is feeling un dysregulated and that comes out as behavior and people don't know how to take that or how to deal with it. A lot of it is a lot of foul language, um, a lot of yelling, a lot of you know like or like some of it too is students not even showing up for class. Like I have Sophia coming and telling me she's like, Mom, they didn't even show up for class. Like half the time, like, and I was like, "What are you talking about?" And so and I'm like, "That doesn't make any sense to me, right?" And like I said, I, a lot of that is just you're taking an antidote from a 15 year old child, but it's repetitive. Mm -hmm. We're in 10th grade. I've heard these things. Seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade. Now we're at 10th grade, and so I'm just really concerned about where we are. And the other thing too is I really want to support the teachers here. So if they need support from community members, from all of us to say, we will not tolerate this, right? Or how do we be supportive? How do we do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think yes, so similar to that, like, you know, there's, there's like sort of the generic like disruptive behaviors and things like that. Um, but I've also noticed like uh, quite a lot of like racism and like transphobic comments, mm -hmm. like homophobic comments that I hear a lot and seem to not really be dealt with it with from teachers and like sometimes other students will like step in but then I also don't know like don't necessarily feel comfortable with that. Um, so then they just will like go unnoticed and undealt with. Mm -hmm. Concerning. That's, that's why I'm here. Yeah, that's why I'm here. I'm here because I'm very concerned for um, my queer community and for the people that are in the school system. And my child is non-binary, and it's um, it's all very disconcerting. So we really try in our house to be an open house. It is an open conversation that I have Sophia every day about how we are a safe space for anyone and all friends that do so and I don't know if a lot of that doesn't happen within our community I think there is a sense of community here of that but then I think there's a totally other side mm -hmm. of the community that a doesn't understand or B does not want to understand period right so you're mm -hmm. struggling with that so how do you support all that how do you support the students trying to figure out mm -hmm. what that means right and so and like I said, we really try. I mean, Sophia knows that, but I don't know if that's happening across the board, right, or how often that is happening. I, I think for me, many moons ago, first I had to acknowledge that I didn't know something. That, and, and not add a but, <laughs> but just to say I don't know anything. And then to get schooled up on that. So because I know my, my 
background is psychology doesn't mean I know anything about necessarily about LGBTQ communities, uh, different ethnic groups. I've got to say to the principals, I know my field, but that's not enough. And I think every teacher should always have that in mind. That's not enough because you know uh, math. That's not enough uh, in this day and age. Probably never was, but didn't teach it back in the day. So, um, so I think how to assume that our and we had this discussion. We've had this discussion for many years at Norwich. So it's not a high school thing. It's it's a people thing. Um, how do we get people to say? We're not going to dock your pay. We're not going to tell anybody on you. But how many of you need extra training in interpersonal stuff, or however you want to label it? To not do that creates some of this and creates, you know, what what you're hearing. Just if luckily Norwich is private, so there's a limit to how many times I'm going to tell you that you need some assistance. And here is how you can get it. Uh, and I understand that, you know, we're talking public education, but it should not be enough. I don't know if there are evaluations at the end of the year. Um, surely something is added to that that goes beyond my, um, my professional capabilities, I would think, mm -hmm. to capture some of this, I would hope. I have found almost every teacher super enthusiastic and creative and great that I've worked here. So I'm, I'm having trouble reconciling why they're not also being more disciplinary or nipping certain things. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I don't, I'm not in not my area of expertise. I'm not an educator. Mm -hmm. But one of my fears is just going to school board meetings and hearing who goes and what they say is I feel like there's a large population who don't believe there's racism going on or don't believe or understand that that people are being disrespected and not welcomed. Um, I'm hearing rumors that one of the new teachers has already quit mm -hmm. um, just because of what they said in their welcoming comments mm -hmm. before they even got here. And so I'm hearing, I don't know if this is true, but I'm hearing they got death threats and that they quit. Wow. And um, it would have been a very welcoming person to the transgender community. So that's concerning that they didn't, weren't even given a chance in the community. Uh, and I don't know how, I don't know how you fix a community like that. No, I know. I, I know. don't know. I know. And I've known for, for over 40 years, I know. I guess my, my question with that would be, and I don't know anything about public schooling, but don't I have, I mean, how do you just get fired? I mean, I don't understand how that happens in private education, you just don't come to school one day with your little backpack and your books and stuff and not show up ever again. So I'm thinking about the person you're thinking about that, I mean, we're nine days in. How, how is it that I left nine days in? I don't understand that. But nor do I understand the, the dynamics and the, uh, the politics of public education. I think some of it is coming from the school system being a little transparent about turnover and why that's happening. Mm -hmm. So I come from a profession, from the health profession, of we're dealing the same, I think every profession is dealing with turnover and people are constantly leaving and not staying, right? But especially here, when you hear some of Sophia's favorite teachers, teachers just left mm -hmm. abruptly. Mm -hmm. And I like, I want to, if there are issues, really deep-seated issues that we need to deal with because we are losing a very insightful and intelligent person, I want to know why. Mm -hmm. And I want to know why as a community member, how can we help that? Because there are community members here that would be willing to step up and do something. Yeah. Well, is this something that, and I have no, I have no idea, but is this something that's happening as a regional thing, is it happening as a national thing, or is it just a RUHS thing? I don't know. I'd have to ask, you know, like whether I feel like we've had turnover within the school system, even since Sophia's entered high school, you know, even just two years, significant turnover with teachers. So, and is that coming from behavior? You know, is that coming from issues that are teachers are feeling unsafe 
Are they feeling unsupported? Are they like, or are they just moving on for different reasons, right? Like that would be, because if it's for the latter and there's something that we can do, I really would like to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like Katie and I can speak to the behavior piece of things. When it comes to personnel matters, Oh, like mm -hmm. we're tasked with keeping things really private. Absolutely. We do have some teachers who might share their perspectives. Right. Um, it, you know, and that's that's up to you. Yeah, I feel like I'm putting people on the spot all night. <laughs> no, I mean, sorry. I, I think yeah. I think I hope we can establish this as a safe place. I think we are yeah. coming from a perspective of really wanting to make some deep-seated cultural change mm -hmm. for our children and for ourselves. Right. This is not something that we, you know, I'm. Like I said, we sat down and we're like, we either got to move our kids and fun or move, or we really need to participate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to leave here, so yeah. we have to participate. And, and this might be totally cold comfort. It is to me at least, but you know, I've purposely over the last few years joined as many networks as I can mm -hmm. to try to address that very question, Trista. Like, is this an RU thing? Is this a right. regional thing? Is this a national thing? Like, what is going on here um, and it has been cold comfort because what I have learned is it is across the board and it is a national problem you know through some of those networks I've joined and again not to diminish specifically what's happening here because obviously we are here because we're identifying that this is an issue and this is a problem and this is something we want to address because regardless of what's happening outside of here that doesn't remove the obligation we have to make things better here for everybody. So not to diminish that at all, but it was at least a little cold comfort of like, there is solidarity. How do we leverage what we can do as a community, as a network, as different networks that overlap in their spheres of influence, <laughs> you know, to help one another to create safe spaces. Like our schools should be safe spaces. People should walk in here and feel relieved to be here because it's safe. Um, and I'm hearing all of you, and I think it's inspiring and motivating even more to just figure this out. And I would say that the rumor going around, I know that you can't talk about it, but the rumor going around is, is that, the, that there was a teacher who did not feel safe. And that is what I've heard from several people. And we have to be very, very aware of that. I went to uh, high school in, in New Hampshire and in the 80s, mid-80s, I guess. Um, in my anecdotal account of, you know, my time there, I don't remember there being much foul language at all. Uh, years later, mid-90s, no. 2000s. Went back, um, significant, uh, what do you call it, uh, renovations were being done. I happened to be on that side of it at that point. And uh, it was very interesting to me that that same school was very profane. Uh, just completely, I mean, these are kids who probably 98% were college bound and the other 2% were who knows? <laughs> I think I was the other two percent. But anyway, uh, it was it was just fascinating to me. And then that same area that uh, professed to be, or in my my memory of it, and you know, we all remember things maybe the way we want to, and not because we're looking here and we're ignoring what's going on over here, possibly. <clears throat> um, uh, teachers were being pressured by parents to give grades that the kids didn't deserve. And the worst part, and this is me listening to conversations, being at lunch in, in places outside of the school, uh, the, the teachers were, some were acquiescing in, in giving those grades. Yeah, so we had kids going from that school to colleges and things like that who probably, you know, you know, in an ideal world, we're doing things because we deserve them and, and we want to do them. And so we have a bunch of people who are compelled by laws or necessity that they can't afford to go to different schools but they're required by law to go to school so we're pushed all here we have these different views and uh, backgrounds and things like that and 
I feel like if it's a national thing, it might be, hopefully there's a pendulum analogy somewhere, because where I'm going with that is just thinking about the profanity. You know, we're getting profane. Oh, by the way, you got anybody who has kids who actually come home and talk to them? I was already talking. I mean, I come home and my mother knows everything. I don't, you know, but I couldn't wait to tell her. Was, my kids, both of them, just, just I mean, they were great CIA agents. They never, <laughs> and they did well in school. They do, they yeah. got good grades yeah. and stuff, yeah. but you wouldn't know anything that was going on. Period. Nothing. Um, you know, it's, I mean, occasionally they bring a friend over and you'd be like, hey, <laughs> uh, so you, you're lucky if you have kids mm -hmm. who come home, mm -hmm. but I don't. I didn't hear about any of this stuff, and I'm not saying it wasn't going on. I certainly know that it is just from Front Porch Forum and sort of like, you know, I live in Brookfield, which right on the border of Williamstown, so it's kind of like we're part of this community almost because of the kids going to school here, which is great. Mm -hmm. We actually moved from Barry to Brookfield for the school mm -hmm. uh, at that time. I know people in Williamstown who really want to move to Barry because of the school, because of the football program. Mm -hmm. you know, we're all on, and, you know, we, we were winning spelling bees left and right. Who beat us? You know, Barry. There's just all kinds of, um, you got enough people in one place, you got great diversity, you got fewer people. I'm not sure where I was going with that, so sorry if I got off the rails a little bit. It's okay, it's fine. Um, I think I, I think about um, how glad I, we were that Sharon had not been born yet, mm -hmm. uh, because I think Sharon Academy, and I, I really support them, and I've got to get down there and now that I have more time, but just kind of focus in on what they do so well. It sounds like, but I think it was a reaction to what some families were not receiving here. Because I think Sharon was born around That's around like, when my daughter graduated, yeah, 2000s yeah. maybe? It was early 2000s. Early 2000s. Um, and I'd hate for another Sharon uh, to happen. Or the two families that I know that are Brookfield families that, will, that are taking their kids out of Randolph to go someplace else, not to Sharon, but to go someplace else. Um, so I guess I'm, I'm wondering what kind of exit information do we get from our families? Uh, whether they feel comfortable in all this openness and that sort of thing, but there needs to be, somebody needs to ask, why are you leaving? <laughs> Where are you going? Um, is there anything that we, we I, I'm behind the eight ball, I confess, I'm a big confessor. Um, learned that from 18 year olds. Um, I'm a big confessor. What could I have done? What could the school have done? It's too late, you've already made your deposit or you're go, you know, you got your transcript and that sort of thing. Not so much for that, they're not gonna change their mind, the two families that I'm thinking of in Brookfield. But it's valuable information mm -hmm. to the school. So I, I um, yeah, uh, Sharon Academy just didn't wake up one day. Right. I think I'll just create Sharon Academy. No, 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 it, it came from someplace. And I think we, those of us that might not know that history need to just remind ourselves of that that um, and it's thriving and all those kids go on to college and uh, all over the country or t trade schools or whatever they're going to do in life they should have been here in my humble opinion mm -hmm. so why weren't they so i, I just had a who in here a teacher is here <laughs> okay two a couple couple Three. teachers yeah. okay awesome so uh, get new to the community. I'd be really interested to hear what your classroom is like. What, what's happening in your classroom? Because I think the exit interview for parents, the exit interview for teachers, where you can anonymize the information but have some mm. data points can be really helpful. But I'd love to hear your experience. What's happening in the classroom? Let's go first. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, oh, you, it, um, really. I, I got a big mouth, so I can go. And I, I hope you be, be honest. Like I really, like I said, I take my, 
I take what Sophia tells me on a daily basis, yeah. you know, and that's her perspective. Yeah. But I really would like to hear from her perspective as a leader here in teaching our, you know, our kids. Yeah, and Tav, I really, Do you mind just introducing yourself? Yeah, since you my, yeah my name is Tav Kalman. I teach uh, English and Social Studies at the high school, mostly 11th and 12th grade. Sierra's in a couple of my classes. Are you Sophia Farrington's yeah. mom? Sophia is in one of my classes. <laughs> Anybody else? I guess, I <laughs> um, and I'm also the union president, so I have some of that broader perspective, although I um, feel like I should. Yeah, there, there are obviously also things that I wouldn't be prudent for me to get into. Um, I think, to, I mean, there's a lot of things I wanted to touch on. I think. Um, I really appreciate what I'm hearing from some of you about wanting to know more information about why folks are leaving the district. I think um, I can definitely say I think that you deserve to know, mm -hmm. and I think um, you're better positioned than us to seek that public information. Okay. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah. But 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 I definitely I encourage you, and and yeah, would love to chat with any of you, you know, over the phone or, or over a cup of coffee or something about more details in, in that um, line of things. Inside the classroom, I mean, it's been a really hard several years. Um, and I think it's important, like, to not, like, the pandemic obviously is, like, the a core driver of that and not just the the masks and the, uh, so many aspects of it, right? Like, both, both the just the logistics of teaching school online or with the safety protocols, the politicization of it, the trauma of it on many levels and in many different ways, the different kinds of kids. Um, yeah, and just, you know, needing to like show up and, you know, keep making some sort of learning happen, um, which honestly, I'm quite proud of how we did in this district, um, which is not to say that, you know, yeah, I think I think we see lots and lots of flaws and lots and lots of, I don't really like the term learning loss, but certainly like anomalous learning stuff and behavioral stuff and developmental stuff. Um, and frankly, like that's gonna be the case for a while. Like this is this is a generational disruption. I, I, for me personally, I think the thing that's been hardest though has been the given all of that, like the the speed at which it seems like. And I think like to what you were saying, this is not just a Randolph thing. This is at all about this, but I, but I think we also have done it in this community. Have just gone back to like okay, business as you you know. It feels to me like there are. Um, things the pandemic revealed about, yeah, just like spots in our community fabric that have worn pretty thin that need to be attended to, and it doesn't feel like um, that conversation is being had in the same way that it was. Um, I also feel like prior to the pandemic, yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel like the pandemic was a, a hard thing in terms of the relationship between parents and teachers and you know other school employees as well um, even though many of us are both right you know which is like one of the like real ironies of it but it felt like I think um, yeah and and you know I, I have a lot of empathy I think for how hard it was as a to parent through the pandemic and to have schools closed and what that does to you know to your life and your ability to work and your ability to feel sane um, but I think just like there was some there was some rough school board meetings, there was some like rough rhetoric being thrown around. I think a lot of folks did maybe for the first time were feeling like, oh yeah, like hey, like <laughs> they value me as long as I'm, you know, doing what to you know doing getting Quiet. what they need and 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 like you know my physical safety or my. Um, you know, mental safety. Mental health um, is, is not as high a priority as perhaps it seemed um, in, in less tough times. Is that a fair way to put it? 100%. So oh, yeah. I think, um, yeah, so that's been hard, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously, yeah, there are some national political trends that are certainly surfacing. Um, and then, you know, to, to I think what was being talked about before, and, and on, you want to 
I just jump in and make it stop talking, please do. Um, but like, I also want to speak a little bit to like the the, the racism, the homophobia, um, which you know, I mean, that has been a thing forever. Mm -hmm. And I think honestly, one of the things that has changed around the same time frame is that I think um, you know, people, particularly students or like recent alums who um, had lived that um, feeling much more empowered than I think they ever have before to speak the truth um, and to push back. And I think that some of what we're seeing right now is the backlash to that, right? To, to you know, which, you know, I'm a history guy, but I think like I show me an instance of, a, you know, positive social change that expanded rights and dignity to more people where there wasn't that, right? So I think, um, I think to the question of like, what do we need from the community? I think, um, I don't know exactly, but I think like one of the forums it takes is like a really visible demonstration that those actually are our values and a rejection of the idea that inclusivity or embracing diversity is, a, is like a political stance, right? Like, like, like that's our job, like mm -hmm. we can't do our job without those being the baseline conditions, just like roofers don't work without safety gear and yeah. scaffolding, you know, it's just like those are like the necessary like things that you need to do your job. Um, so yeah, it just seems to me that, that um, it would be helpful to have more voices um, saying like, you, you can politicize <laughs> those things as a citizen all you want, but like that's not, that's not the consensus here. And, and we don't actually have to have a debate on those terms of, of whether creating spaces that are specifically, or curriculum or, or whatever it is, that is specifically designed to make students who have had a specific experience of being unsafe or, or feeling unwelcome because of their race, because of their gender identity, because of their class background. Like, no, like that's not your business, frankly. Um, so I, I think like, Again, that is, that is, I think, a, a core belief that virtually everybody who works in the school shares. Um, but it hasn't felt terribly safe to, you know, to, to say that in public. Um, then how do you share it? How can that be a core value of yours, or of mine, if I don't feel safe to say it? And live yeah, it. Yeah. And live it. So that when I hear something in the hallway, excuse it. Hold that thought <laughs> so I can go out there and say, hey, Betty, what is going on? I mean, I just, I think the safety goes all over the place, not mm -hmm. just with the kids, <coughs> but with the faculty. Mm -hmm. And I suspect, gosh, I suspect staff as well. So I, just to know that I think it, but don't feel safe enough to say at a meeting, maybe we should, let's talk about how we can have turned that around. Yeah. I think I think the demographic at this meeting is pretty different some, from some of the meetings that we've had in the past. And that has been... Really? Really, yes. yes. That has been really chilling and hard for a lot of our staff. Mm -hmm. um, there are meetings where we had students who identify as part of the LGBTQ plus community speak up. So people's children, mm -hmm. you know, speaking up about their lived experience being shouted down by adults in the community. Oh, all right, that's it. Um, that's so one of the things that I think can be really challenging is that kids come here and we talk to them about the difference between free speech and hate speech and harassment and all of those different things. And then you look at the national politi political scene and the ways in which adults treat each other mm -hmm. and the ways in which they may experience mm -hmm. being mistreated in their lives. And so we try to help them gain understanding and develop empathy and we're in this environment where some of the adults who teach empathy and and I would say love these kids really deeply regardless of their ideology mm -hmm. sure. um, try to
to do that work and just feel really defeated in a lot of ways mm -hmm. and not supported. So I really appreciate all of you coming out tonight. I think continuing to engage um, beyond this one meeting because you could get the impression from some of the meetings that have been held before and you can find them online um, that our community is very different from what we're talking about this evening. Yep. As a matter of fact, in one of our interviews last spring, we were interviewing a math teacher, very highly qualified candidate, and one of the first things she asked us, so right, we do our interview, we have our committee, mm -hmm. and um, we ask all our questions, and then we ask people if they have questions for us. Mm -hmm. And this woman, who did not take a job here, and I don't think that it was that um, her spouse was going to work at UVM, so they wanted to be closer to Burlington. Anyway, um, her question was, I looked for school board meetings online, and I found this meeting from last spring. And she said, you know, I was just going to watch for a minute to get a little bit of a feel for the community. And then she said, I ended up watching the whole thing. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And tell me about that and and I think that was a hard introduction to our community and that was hard to have to address um, what exactly was happening you know in that setting and still feel like we would be appealing to this candidate who might want to come teach here um, so I think one of the solutions is just having community members remain engaged and so that's why we're really interested um, in having these forums in creating groups that are interested in different parts of the community or maybe like a group this size we could all just continue meeting as one group um, but if we had more people I think we can continue to talk about our community and talk about the ways in which community outside the school can support the school because I feel like the school is very much a part of the community. We're educating the community's children. And so we can't exist on like a parallel track. We have to work together and we need for people who, you know, have strong values and want to be a part of the school community to come out and have conversations with us. So one thing I would recommend is having them more often and really, so my, so Sophia wanted to come, but I said, I've only been to one of the, and like, I really want to understand what kind of space this is before I invite her to come. So, and I will bring her, I mean, she is an independent person and she has her own thoughts and feelings and she is more than welcome. We don't have to agree, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. to be in a space where she feels safe to talk about these things and is heard by her teachers is really, like I don't know if it's every other week, if it's once a month, because at the last one I came to, Lane did like in, it was months ago, so. And I know it was the summertime, it was before. In the auditorium? No, it was here, oh. it was here. And it was a very small handful of people. But if I know they're gonna happen more often, like mm -hmm. I will be a voice for people for outside of here mm -hmm. and tell people to be involved like I said my family my parents went here <laughs> my grandparents went here we went here my children are here we have very deep-seated roots here and I'm not saying some of them are good either I'm, I'm not but we have to do something about it I was just gonna add that I think um, I think it would be awesome to get more regular conversations specifically between parents and teachers and other staff. Like I think, you know, we don't also turn out to these meetings and <laughs> all that often. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't yeah, I don't know if the answer is like more things like this or if there are also like other ways we could organize just yeah. I don't know, like a meal that mm -hmm. is a community mm -hmm. thing, or, you know, yes. just something that, that is like not so formal. Uh, or not that this is, <laughs> I also, I wanted to say earlier, I, I'm not like afraid to speak to you people. <laughs> I, I feel very safe in this circle. Uh, so that was, so, but uh, 
But yeah, but I, but again, I, but I do want to speak to like I think part of the reason why there aren't more people here is because some of the meetings that yes. this could be have not been so fun, right? Yes. And I think um, figuring out how to like how to break that down, and I, I but it goes both ways too, because the other thing is like I know there's lots of parents, perhaps not the ones in this room. Maybe you who like going into a school building is like a little traumatic, right? Like because that wasn't the best part of your life or the best. <laughs> you said you might have been one of the two we said. Yeah. So, yeah. so could you um, guys give so, some examples of the meetings that did not go well, just so, so I have some sort of idea of what what was said or the, the tone? Or the, or the I, word, I, I can I can speak like, a little bit before? to the one that happened in the spring because it happened in my library. Oh, and I, I, just, I just I want to understand. You were there when it happened. I watched the video. I had to leave because I was like, I will cry. Um, yes. So I left, but I then watched the video after because I was just like, this this cannot be the community that I signed up for. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I, I came tonight sort of a little bit like, okay, and, and I had a couple friends want to come with me, and I'm like, I don't know mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. vibe we're going to walk into. Um, so, yeah, um, it was pretty hateful. I was at that meeting too, and yeah, it was hmm. it was very partisan from a certain group attacking hmm. the school board and, and, and the superintendent uh, about a particular issue. Uh, I've also <coughs> been at meetings here a year or so ago, or no, a couple years ago, mm -hmm. when the when the group uh, the, yeah. talking about the small group that. Uh, the racial, racial justice class. Yeah. Racial yeah. justice before yeah. the black flag, yeah. Black Lives Matter flag was writ, put up. That was a wonderful meeting, in a sense, because those who opposed were very so, outspoken, yeah. and those who, but it was a dialogue. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they were able to share. I also was at um, the big meeting in the auditorium when Lane uh, Millen, gave a presentation about the emotions, and, and it was very effective, I thought, uh, how we ha have red zones on each side, and we need to be more calm in the middle and discuss. So I think more of those kind of meetings, they're, they're, I, would, I think hot topic issues, like I would suggest, what is being taught in, in American history here at Randolph Union, would bring out a large group on for many diverse opinions. And that would be good mm -hmm. if it was well managed. Mm -hmm. But that's the kind of thing that needs to happen in, in this community. That's my I point think you're view. right. And I think um, someone who is skilled at moderating right. such uh, forms, but just not somebody who just wants who has the goodness for all, it's, there's a certain skill set that is, is needed, I think. Well, you're um, setting guidelines, and you're setting guidelines for the meeting, right? You're going to set them at the beginning, and you're going to say, mm -hmm. well, this is how we're going to do this, mm -hmm. and we can agree to disagree, mm -hmm. we can have open dialogue, we're not going to agree, mm -hmm. but we're going to stay respectful Correct. within this space. Mm -hmm. And then once we leave here, you know, mm -hmm. I can still look at David and say we can be friends even though we disagree, right? Like that's okay. And that will go, that will grow with my kids, I hope, right? Like if I'm teaching them that I don't have to hate David just because he doesn't like history about something, right? Like that's what we have to do and I don't, I think what I'm seeing in the schools is our schools are a product of the culture of our community. Mm -hmm. Right? I don't know. I mean, that's what I'm feeling. It's mm -hmm. like kind of like, it's like, ooh, like, mm -hmm. it doesn't feel good. I'm so. juicing because it just struck me picking up on that. One of the good things about that initial meeting that about the uh, racial, well, again, I can't remember the term. The, the, the racial justice class. class. Yeah. The racial, racial justice class was that they, in a sense, were presenting. It came from the school, the kids, telling the process of how they, we're getting to this point and what they've been doing. And we as a community were responding. So any topic that comes from within the school would be good for the school 
as well as the community that's listening and learning to be respectful in their response. I think having some of these forums and spaces in the community that would be open to housing us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some of the new businesses, like if they had space, I mean, obviously we're not very big right now, but obviously some spaces that would be open to forming or having these forums mm -hmm. so that students could see and having open conversations about these things, these topics, they would know then that the cafe is a safe place or the gym is a safe place, right? Just by know that we are housing, we are under somewhere that is safe and we can talk about these safe things and so they know they can go there. One of the things that kept me at Norwich for 32 years was that there, we have something called guiding values. And so if you can't meet those, then you really should not apply to work there. Uh, we respect the, the rights of others, diverse opinions, uh, health and fitness, of course. Not me, but <laughs> most others. <laughs> health and fitness. There's <coughs> 10, 12 different values. It's not religious-based. It's humanity-based. And without those, the, it's, if you pull up Norwich's webpage, going to be right there. So if your kid cannot live this way, then we're probably not the right school because you're not going to be able to scream at people, yell at people, diverse points of view, but you have to learn how to uh, talk about your point of view. So I, I was at some meeting, I don't know what it was, but uh, one of the school board uh, people, members, said, what do we want a Randolph Union High School graduate to look like? And I think if we start there, if we start there, we can certainly, uh, what do we want our kids to look like? A couple seats here. There's some over there too. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> so is there is there something in the school that says this is what a Randolph Union high school graduate looks like? Yes, uh, pass for complete getting the diploma. That is so not enough, mm -hmm. or we wouldn't be here. So I I, I don't know because it's been you know, over twenty years since I've been here. Well, you did you said some interesting things. Mm -hmm. You know if if. Uh, the Norwich employer, the Norwich student, mm -hmm. or the Norwich fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. I think we're talking about Norwich University and not Norwich, Vermont, but it could be. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, absolutely. We've um, had visitors in Norwich, Vermont. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, and then that, as you put it out, it's a private. That's true. You know, that's, that's true. true. You know, so true. up comes Sharon, and maybe Sharon is a good fit. I mean, we have. Um, we have a, a tech center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I went to school, it was done this way. Our tech was integrated with the high school, which mm -hmm. I advocate that. You know, the same person who's playing the violin and going mm -hmm. to, I don't know, uh, Wellesley is down in auto, auto shop mm -hmm. learning how to repair mm -hmm. her vehicle because right. she doesn't want to be gypped by mechanics later on down the road or fill in the blank. It was um, not integrated when Myron was here. What's that? It was not when my daughter was here. I don't think it is now. Is it? It's not. Um, it is we not have integrated. some opportunities for integration right here um, in our innovation center and our project-based learning challenges. Um, but the tech center is a much more immersive world if you know which field right. you so want there, to go into. And there's advantages to that, arguably. Yeah. Right? Oh, for sure. So, if I'm, call, I'm not sure the right term for it, um, if the majority of I don't know. Ivy League bound kids are at Sharon, and I'm just throwing that out as a possibility. I don't know that, but or if there's a a type that's particularly sensitive to whatever. Uh, well, first of all, thank goodness that we do have these options because we this is public. We don't our kids don't have a choice. Or, well, or though they kind of do, I mean, you know, they they, they kind of do, but. I don't know. Like, I mean, I came from a family who picked, and you know, we, we were, we were uh, economically blessed enough, or, or cursed. I mean, depending on how you look at it. I mean, there's, we, we could pick a community that, at that time, you know, hmm. uh, 
the, 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 there was there really wasn't any clear prejudices within the school because we didn't have any clear things to be prejudiced about. <laughs> It, it, and we had that community, and we had the, the, the economic whatever to be able to live in that community and kind of ignore uh, out of luck of living in New England. I mean, we're here in Vermont, we're I sort of isolated, we're an island in some ways, even though we, you know, we're certainly not a diverse wonderland. Um, I don't know where it's going with that either, I'm getting off track. So, anyhow, I apologize, but you're just, I was just thinking about. I guess where it's going with this is that we are dealing with a situation where people are here not by choice, right. for the most part. I mean, they're sort of like, yeah, well, you can always do this. Well, maybe you can, maybe you can. Even right. if you can, it still takes a lot of effort to pick up and move your kids to share an academy or, you know, do the lottery thing, and then now now you have to bus them to Woodstock or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Share an yeah. academy is not free. Right. No. So no. right, it's, no. it's very expensive. Right. So like, if the options That's are, options. you pinch your pennies and hope that your kid can go to Sharon Academy, or feel like you know have whatever's going on, for example, here, yeah. like that, there has to be there has to be more equity. Um, yeah, because yeah, that's just not on the table. It's just not on the table. Yeah. For the majority oh, yeah. of our online. students, like, that's not They have an to option. be able to feel right. safe. But and, right. and when I say that that may actually be a good thing, um, you know, I, I'm the trades guy. I mean, I, I was the electrician. I was the HVAC guy. I mean, I, you know, I got good grades at the school I went to. It was a very, you know, high-ranked school. And I got into a very good college. I didn't know why I was there when I got there. <laughs> uh, it certainly wasn't a fit for me. But that's what everybody did from that mm -hmm. fishbowl that I went to school at. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I'm not sure where it's going. To go. um, oh, I know where it's going. To go. I, it, it's, it's a public school. So my, my son came home, uh, junior, and asked me to give, he interviewed me about what I thought was politically important or something like that. And one of the questions was, Wait, who's your son? Jeb Hicken, Jeb okay, okay. Yeah. And one of the questions was something like, you know, what kind of history should we, we be teaching? And my answer was, whatever the government says. Where I'm going with that is public schools, it's more like teaching a common language. And, and the common language can be um, cultural, embracing differences, how to handle conflicts, um, how to handle fear. Because mm -hmm. I think fear is probably at the heart of a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah, feel safe? Mm -hmm. You don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you don't feel safe? Well, you're certainly not learning. Because you're like this, and as, as an adolescent, you're like this anyway, yeah. probably. <laughs> you know, or even worse, you're, you're like this because you're looking in a mirror and just, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. picking out all the problems that you're having. And it's, so, um, blah, 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 blah. It, it, go ahead. Yeah, I think <laughs> one of the things, um, so my son is 2021 alumni from Randolph Union High School, and I think one of the things that you know we joke about but that I value most that he came away from here with um, aside from the fact that right now he dresses almost exactly like Tuff Kelman. <laughs> He's in Tev's advisory. I could show you pictures. I don't recognize it. It's a real thing. Um, but I knew he had a little fun. Yeah. He can craft almost any argument you throw at him with evidence to support his point of view. That's good. So they start Socratic seminars in seventh grade, eighth grade, right up through. And even points of view, because he's, you know, he's got an adolescent brain, so sometimes right. he will just like poke at something that he knows I value just to rattle oh, yeah. me a little bit. Oh, yeah. um, but he can do that with evidence from good, reputable mm -hmm. sources mm -hmm. and I really as a parent value that because we may not always agree with our kids but in order to live and exist in this world they need to be able to create a claim and defend that and have that come from a place of knowledge and be able to spot you know the the information that isn't reputable mm -hmm. because there is so much of it um, 
that just comes at them every minute of every day. So to pick up on your point, this, there, this is a public school, but that doesn't rule out excellence, values, and the kind of what we were describing as Norwich, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if just, and, and the kind of learning that your son has done. Who, the government doesn't say you should have Socratic <laughs> forums or discussions. Well, but, I mean, I think a common standard is inquiry and research, and so we, we yeah. sort of put our own brand on that, right? Yeah. right? But at the same time, that is a standard that's out there, and I, I would argue whether you go to a trade school or whether you go to a four-year university, that ability to research something and support your idea or your values or your assertion with reputable sources and evidence um, is really important. And how to how to get that out. Yeah. So that I'm not perceived as some bully. Right. Is is part of that. We always just ask the question, what kind of kid do we want out in the world? Mm -hmm. You know, she went to college, she did all the all that stuff. Um, boy, I certainly would cringe to have um, one that's not some way embracing humanity, somehow. Um, and that's, that's what you do at home, I would think, because we're public. You can't force that in, the, in public education, but I, I would think we all would ask, what kind of kid, when they graduate from high school, and they go off to college, do you want coming home for that October break? Which at Norwich, was five days. And then after that, a week and a half of Thanksgiving. And then after that, almost a month of Christmas break. Mm -hmm. um, do, you, you know, you want somebody respectful. You want somebody, at least we did. And so when I say, what kind of kid do we want besides a good education, I'm thinking that's not good enough to take into the world now. It just isn't. I mean, I don't know, I'm a product of the 60s, so I had the luxury of being able to learn how to listen all kinds of sides. I had that luxury, as turbulent as it was. So I, I guess, I don't know, but I, I have hope. I have hope. <laughs> a quick question and maybe a statement. Uh, what are we talking about when we say are we uh, somebody is feeling safe or we're trying to make an environment where people feel safe or you know, what does that mean? That's a question. Yeah, I think, do you want to feel that yeah, first? I mean, I, I think when, when I think about safety for our kids is that they walk in the building and feel good about being here. Um, and that's because they feel free to be who they are mm -hmm. without judgment and you know, with the ability to like walk down the hallways and be in their classrooms and access learning. And of course, there are going to be pretty typical things that get in the way of that, that all adolescents experience. But mm -hmm. that to me is a barrier that is insurmountable to learning. Um, and that's what we're here to do. So that should never be in the way. And it is in the way right now. Mm -hmm of kids being able to learn, of kids being able to access spaces. I think about kids who don't want to walk into the cafeteria, mm -hmm. you know, which is a place of anxiety anyway. And as many have mentioned tonight, we've experienced this time of this pandemic that has exacerbated things like anxiety and depression, for sure. But those things can be further exacerbated if you feel like because you are who you are, you are going to be persecuted or judged or targeted just by walking into a space that should be accessible to everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think we're working toward, you know, not all kids are gonna love coming to school, right? Mm -hmm. But like in my utopian world, they walk in this building and they like breathe a sigh of relief. I'm glad I'm here. So Even where is that undertow home. coming from? So if that feeling is happening, and if that feeling is here, where do you think 
I mean, if it's that palpable, where of being unsafe. Yes. Yeah. Where and that's so. Where is that coming from? I think. Yeah. I think okay. it's going to speak to that. Like, yeah. yeah. As a student, like thinking about like walking in, like on my first day of school for my classes, I walked in and like we were doing an introduction activity, and then like afterwards we were walking back and like people had their side conversations, and behind me there was a group of students like having a conversation about another student and saying like really really transphobic things about that student. And so then just like hearing that in this classroom that like I'm going to be in, it sort of made me feel like, okay, I feel like I need to like put up, put up some walls. Or like, you know, I don't necessarily feel exactly like be able to like let out a breath. In you can't be who you are. You yeah, like I just, I'm like hearing these conversations from people who like, you know, that's, those are very hurtful things to like anybody, people I would know. And so just like being in that environment, whereas then contrasting like, uh, like the racial justice class, like, you know, I walk in there and it's a group of people who are all thinking the same thing, people who are all wanting to work for the same thing. And so it's just like a very different environment. And like, you can really feel the difference in mm -hmm. each classroom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I think mm -hmm. I'm observing just that there's been some email communication. I guess this, the forum tonight with the superintendent is all about school safety. Um, and phys physical representations of safety, like a doorway or a street somewhere. I don't even know, I don't have a sense of the school yet. Somewhere that's dark or scary or we don't like or cars come through or something. Um, but I'm not seeing email communication from the superintendent um, or really addressing psychological safety. Mm -hmm. Right. And as an educator myself, the, the, the most important thing that I can do in a classroom is create an environment where people feel safe to learn, mm -hmm. where they can, can shut the door and in that space we can, we can learn together. And that doesn't happen in a day. Like, you have to create that space. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as a college professor, I get 15 weeks. <laughs> I mean, some, some of you get a whole year, some of you get half a year. Um, sometimes you get to see the students more or less, but if there isn't that psychological safety of knowing that I don't have to be afraid to be who I am, to say what I feel I need to, and I don't have to be afraid of physical harm or emotional harm mm -hmm. from others. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's it is literally no different than being in one of those meetings that you were talking about from the spring as adults and we're in a space and somebody says things that are hurtful or harmful and then what is our reaction you know we kind of shut down and walk away right we don't engage because it becomes a threatening kind of environment or you get angry i mean the other or, uh, the other off response to that right is, yeah is anger right anger, anger right? right and then you have conflict and so i think that what i what i'm hearing is that there's opportunity for uh community members who want to help create safe spaces and uh, both physical and psychological safety to partner with you and the teachers to figure out ways that we can do that. Mm -hmm. And does that mean that, you know, if there's a board meeting and there's a certain vocal group of people, that there's a different vocal group of people that's able to step up and say those values and it's just not resting on the shoulders of teachers. Mm -hmm. um, like, how are we going to show up in that support and what does that look like? What do you need from us to be able to do that? Mm -hmm. um, and then if there's four or five of us who are willing to go in and dispute or not be angry, but kind of try to shut down some of these voices that are disrespectful and angry and spouting things that are coming from a place of, you said fear, right? A place of fear rather than a place of community, then we can help kind of I don't know if I want to say we're going to turn the tide, stem the tide, but we can at least help our teachers and your staff to feel that they have support and then help our students to feel that there's a safety net and to help some of our other students who are trying to find their way um, caught in between some of that to maybe hear and listen to other points of view. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Yeah, I think. Staying engaged is really important. David. I was going to say that's a valiant goal. I think 
think it'd be important to also simultaneously try to engage students themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, when I hear that story, mm -hmm. as much as you do at a school board level, it's only gonna impact kids so much. Yeah. So when I think about how do I impact kids, like my kids are like kids, they don't talk very much. So I don't hear all that. And, and when I go to some of these school board meetings, if I'm playing devil's advocate, some of those people honestly didn't know what it's like, like what those comments, and I don't think some of them even believed that they're happening, which is, mm -hmm. so I guess one idea, there were some really brave students who spoke up at some of those meetings. Mm -hmm. um, could or should there be some sort of anonymous reporting system? Someone like this junior could report without, you know, to a safe Absolutely. safe there teacher, is. and then... There is. there is. Right, I thought I read that yeah, recently. Yeah. But okay. can those then be published so that parents like me and other parents in the community can hear that? I, I, I'm hopeful that I think the majority of parents in this community would be supportive of, of a safe culture here. And if they heard these things that are that are known things going on, maybe, maybe they would speak up mm -hmm. to their kids more often mm -hmm. and, and encourage their kids to be safer. I don't know, maybe that's a pipe dream. Or maybe mixing it up with different parents and different opportunities. So maybe if David's kids wanted to say something to me at a certain mm -hmm. place, right? Because mm -hmm. sometimes it feels awkward to talk to your parents about mm -hmm. something. Maybe it's not the time where you don't want to, but maybe you've got another opportunity with another adult in a safe place, you would say something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm only troubleshooting, right? I'm only trying to think at a, at a, on a broad view of what different things that we can do. I think one students. place that we want to pivot to just before we adjourn because there's a, another meeting following us in a, about 10 minutes, the um, superintendent's forum. Um, I think we also wanted to generate some ideas about some committees that we might be able to form based on some of what we're hearing tonight. You know, the concerns that you're bringing to us, the topics <coughs> that you're interested in. Um, we have heard of committees, subcommittees um, in the past that are focused on things like, you know, there could be like an academic focus um, and maybe it's also looking at the course co catalog and thinking about what we're offering the student body. Um, there are committees that are based around equity. There are committees that are based around school culture and climate there, you know, so just to give you an idea of what I've seen in terms of like committees that have formed before, um, and that are based on some of what I've heard today, um, it would be helpful to us if maybe we could generate some of those ideas, what we could form around, um, and then maybe when we meet next, we could again present some of what came up and maybe start to organize ourselves. What do we have now? What do we have now? What committees? Do well, we have now? what we right now we don't have any. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> clean slate. <laughs> so we're starting with a clean slate. <laughs> Um, listening to all of you this evening, and I thank you for coming and having this conversation. It feels like a committee focused on culture and folding into that behavior and equity um, could be one direction. Um, it feels like a committee focused on athletics and activities, um, so like a revival of boosters um, could be another direction. And then I'm hearing a lot about curriculum. Um, or that kept, we, it kept being a thread that we came back to. So, so I would sort of propose three committees moving forward. I'm wondering if you feel like I've left anything off that list. I would say had most thriving colleges, um, you can't work without a parents association, mm -hmm. a family association. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I would quit 32 years ago without looking at them as allies, mm -hmm. not troublemakers, but <coughs> allies. Of course, they're paying big bucks <laughs> to be allies, but I don't know how we do that with our community members yeah. because we want that information to come. It's just that I'm appalled that any meetings would bully kids. I'm appalled at that. I, I just, I, I know it's true. But being the true Midwesterner that I am, I can't believe it. <laughs> I just can't believe it. So, you know, to have, tell, tell us what's on your mind, community, but you got to do it civilly. You cannot just do it any old kind of way. So I, I think, I don't know what, 
back in the day here, it was Parents Association, or what is it PTO. called? Yeah. PTO. PTO. I don't know if we want to leave that dead and come up with a different title. Um, when's the last time there was a PTO or a PTA or whatever it's called? I think like 2007. Oh, wow. oh so nobody knows time. it. So you know <laughs> something different. Okay. Wow. What, what did we talk about at the cabinet meeting last week? Yeah, the same thing. Oh. Um, forming, forming this sort of organization. Well, you can't yeah. leave the community out. No. In these discussions, it won't work, especially this particular community. Right. It'd be really great to have another forum like this when it's not Tummer's Fair. And I know. Or just to have to see if we could get more students here. Like, mm -hmm. and I would I, yeah. to hear what they want and bringing up some of the ideas that we came yeah. from, your three committee ideas, and see yeah. kind of what their input in as well and move yeah. forward from there. Everybody we bring a friend. Next week. <laughs> you know, I think it's October 19th. Okay. Yeah, we're just we're checking. The, we're we have check them the calendared for the whole year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Our community forums. I think our next one is October 19th. The third Thursday of every month. The third Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. I'd really like to hear from more teachers. Um, uh, uh, we were talking about you know safe, safe classrooms, feeling safe, things like that. We had uh, uh, classes where we feel particularly mm -hmm. safer than, let's say, you know, a community environment like the uh, cafeteria or something. So, the, you know, that kind of makes sense because different people have different objectives and goals and things that. That they're interested in, and maybe that you know they're actually talking a similar language in those areas. So, uh, I would like to hear from teachers really if they hear something objectionable, like we were talking about. Uh, we didn't, we, we sort of uh, dabbled on the profanity aspect, and, and I'm thinking that that's more of a universal language now than it used to be, and then maybe that's something that we kind of have to, you know, what are the guidelines? So, I, I I hear something, I hear something, a, a, a bad joke about somebody. I think it's a bad joke. I'm a teacher. I think it's a bad joke. What are my, are there clear-cut mechanisms? You know, if, if, if A, then B, then C. Now I can focus on, now I'm, I'm made to feel secure and safe as a teacher in my classroom. So the, I don't know, five to hopefully 30 students California, we had 30 students in each classroom plus. So we'd like to see that here. But anyway, you know, um, because I feel safe as a teacher to either to work here or or, or or that I have mechanisms to deal with these things. Well, now I'm able to, and I'm guessing I'm not a teacher, but you know, I'm guessing that now, now I can focus and my um, students are going to. You know, either feel safe in the environment I can provide them because you know what I mean. So I, I just like to hear more from teachers about not so much are they being supported. I don't even know what that means, but you know, do they have um, could, bad guidelines? So they are, what's the what are the rules of the game? Is there a common language? I mean, maybe try and understand what that person on the other side is saying when they're using profanity. Do our ear, you know, because our ears, some of us, our ears are just shut off. We can't hear that those words, which is just that's reality. So maybe we come to the table a little bit and say, okay, we, we, um, what are we actually trying to say? Are there words that are, and if the words are unacceptable, on, you know, whether they're LGBTQ jokes that are bad, they're considered bad. I mean, these are cultural shifts too. They can be. That's been my experience anyway. Fifty some odd years old doesn't mean they're ever appropriate for any. Anytime, especially in a school. So, how do we get that? How do we how do we say to everybody, including the community, you know, whether it's front porch forum stuff or whatever, these are the game. This is the game we're playing, and the, and, and the game we're playing has certain rules, you know, um, uh, and, and you know, and if if you can't follow, if you can't play by these rules, th that's fine. But but these are the results of that decision. I think, mm -hmm. I think rules is a better term than I used as values, but I meant the same thing. And that is if whatever Randolph Union comes up with, this is how we live in this structure. Okay. This, this is how we live. And it's on your web page, it's an employment page, it's parent what? newsletter, it's blah, blah, blah. Giving people the option to opt out, not based on anything else, but oh gosh, I can't live like that. And I, that, you hit on it, probably more universal language would be rules instead of values, but I meant the same thing.
could you please invite student council? We can invite student council. And, oh, yeah. and NHS. Yeah. Yeah. And oh. the captain's council. The, yeah, the captain's council. Okay. Any other leadership groups? You know? mm -hmm. Yep. I'm just, I'm wondering, do we have, a, do you have all of our names? Like, you know who yes. is here? Yes, we've yeah, written them all down. Yep. Right. There's a yep. way to, right, just yep. want to make sure that Thank you. there's a way to continue yeah. that. And, yes. and one thing that we are, are dedicated to doing is um, capturing some summarized notes of our discussion this evening. So, of course, this meeting has been <coughs> filmed by Orca Media, so that'll be available online. Um, and then we will share our notes from this meeting so that people understand what we've discussed. Um, and I just would appreciate any follow-up if you want to send an email or call Katie or I. We're always excited to hear from the community and happy to have more of a conversation. There is an anonymous um, line to report harassment when you witness it. It's linked on the OSSD Web page and, and in our last newsletter, we shared that again just so that um, families hopefully would see that and take note. Um, and I don't want to run over time wise so that we don't bump Elaine's meeting and make nope. that later. Nope. So, um, again, I can come in and sit down and we can do a transition because my guess is some of the topics that you're touching on that other people are mm -hmm. so maybe coming in. Okay. What I'm hearing yeah. is that the next one is October 19th. Oh, on the uh, um, 20th. 20th. Okay. And we'll invite students and more community members and more parents and more anyone. And yep. from there, we can sort of set up a plan <coughs> for that meeting. Yes. Yep. Just I'm concrete. So yes, it's the 20th. <laughs> yeah. is it at five Thank you. It's a 5.30 to 7 meeting on the 20th of October. Yep. Yep. Thank you all for joining Thank us this so evening. Much. We really appreciate your input. Thank you. Yeah, and I hope you'll stay for the next meeting, too.